Welcome to Learn from the Experts, brought to you by WBOA. I'm Marianne Marzano, and today we're going to talk about staying on track and reaching your goals. Today we have Julia. Hi. Julia, how are Hi, you today? Mary Good, thanks. Good. So your full name and your name of your business? Uh, Julia Mines. I'm a coach, so Julia Mines Coaching. Perfect. Coaching is such a big thing now. I think it's really important. And so how did you get into it? Great question. I had just left a job. I was miserable there. Mm. And I thought, yay, I'm free. And then I discovered I'm not happier even though I left my job. And so I had to do a lot of serious looking inside and thinking. And I started studying something called positive psychology, which is actually the science of what makes people flourish and thrive. And through that, I realized, oh, I'm going to be a coach. I can actually help people. And I realized I better set some goals. And one of my goals was to become a coach. Perfect. So goals. People talk about goals a lot. Mm -hmm. But then I know people get frustrated they don't reach their goals. So what's yeah. something that might keep them from reaching their goals? Well, the number one killer of dreams and goals is actually fear. Mm -hmm. So people talk about, I don't have time, I feel disorganized, I'm overwhelmed. But in truth, those are actually little red flags that what may be underneath is fear. That's, that's so true. That's happened to me so many times right. where you're frustrated or saying, oh, I don't want to do this anymore, but it's actually fear. So how yeah. can they overcome that? Well, actually, you hit on something really interesting, especially with a long-term goal. It's really hard to stay focused, to keep going when the going gets tough, when it gets frustrating. So especially with long-term goals, we need to keep some things in mind. So I have five hacks to stay on track with your goals. Perfect. So what are they? Yeah. One is do a little inventory of your values. Have you ever done that? Have you ever made yes. a, a list of what bottom line will not compromise? Yes. Yep. That's really, I, I noticed that made a big difference because it's the decision is made ahead of time. The decision's made ahead of time. And also when you feel like you, you, one has to have tremendous self-awareness, like, mm -hmm. uh, I'm afraid. We know what fear is. Fear is, I don't want to make the phone call. Fear is, I don't want to have that difficult conversation. Fear is, ah, uh, not today, right? So when we notice those moments, we come back to our list of values and say, wow, I value X, Y, Z. I value hard work, which I've already put in, and I don't want to sabotage it or abandon it. I value whatever else might be on the list. The other day, actually, a client who came to me by way of his work life um, was tempted to have an affair with somebody he cares deeply about. And we went back to his values. And what he realized was, you know what? Actually, I've worked so hard on myself. I don't want to end up in the mess that it will create yes. if I do this. So That is huge. Yeah. That's yeah. one example. That's great. Yeah. Values. Okay, that's number one. Number two is how we frame our goal, the way we name it actually matters. An approach goal versus uh, an avoidance goal. An approach goal is one we want to come to, one mm -hmm. we're excited about. An avoidant goal is one we want to run away from. So the language mm. we use, yeah, the language we use to define our goal matters. One that says, I have to, I should, I better. That one, that one's going to make us feel ashamed, afraid, depressed, regretful, remorseful. Instead, I want to be healthy right? instead of I have to lose 50 pounds. Right. They're different. Yes. Same outcome. Right. And the first, uh, the voiding one doesn't have the passion behind it to push you forward. Good point. Yeah. The other piece is written into an approach goal is our aspiration, mm. is our future, the thing we want to create. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So, so far, you're doing great. So what's the third one? I'm the, excited to hear about. Thank you. The third one is knowing that willpower is not unlimited. We don't get endless amounts of willpower. In fact, we run out of it in a day. Wow, well, yeah. Yeah. So there's something called way power. 
way power can help us with our willpower. If we know, for example, that by 5 p.m. we're exhausted because we already made 40 choices in the day and every one of those choices wears down our willpower, we need to rely on our way power. How are we going to get there? If we know that we need to take care of a piece of our goal, maybe we ought to do it at the first part of our day because if we waste our willpower on 80,000 emails, it's curtains by the end of the day when we promised right. we'd go running. Yes. So we need a plan oh for our way power. Yeah. yeah. How many times have I come home at 5 o'clock and decided to read a book and suddenly it's 8 o'clock and nothing happened? Right. So that's great. Right. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. So what's the next one? The next one is, have I just taken a baby step or a leap? Frequently, people think, all right, I really care about the political system. I am going to run for Congress tomorrow. Guess what? That's a leap. <laughs> a huge leap. A huge <laughs> leap. That one's a huge leap. But people do that all the time around their goals. They think, I am here and I should be there. But the truth is, we need to make our goals into the smallest steps. Yes. Great. The smaller the step, the easier it is to cross the threshold and accomplish that little piece without freaking ourselves out. Because the, the bigger the step we have to take, there may be actually 10 steps in that. And those 10 steps, each one moves us forward, whereas the big leap is right. like, I'm going to crash and burn. Right. And sometimes that big leap, we see it, but we don't know how we're going to get there. That's it. That's where the way power comes in, right. actually. You know, even a rudimentary planning of how we're going to get to that bigger that actually, place. Actually, I just yeah. read a great quote by Martin Luther King Jr. Mm. It says, you don't have to see the whole staircase to stay, take the first step. I love yeah, that. Yeah, I really liked it. I wrote it down. Of course, I write down quotes all over the That's place. That's exquisite. Yeah. I love it. And, you know, you bring up a good point, which is stay inspired. Surround ourselves with quotes or whatever it is that's going to keep going, help us keep going. Right. That's yeah. great. Yeah. And then I have one more hack. Okay. And this one is a question that each of us must ask. And most of us don't like asking this question. And the question is, who can help? Mm. Who can help? Yep. We often think we have to do it all by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, maybe actually we need to ask for a favor. Maybe we actually need to recruit a lawyer or a colleague or a coach or a the list may be long. Maybe it's a friend or a neighbor. Right. But lots of us don't like asking that question, but it can frequently free us up so we don't have to do it all alone. You know, we're hardwired in our brains to be social creatures. We are social creatures. Mm -hmm. So we need each other, actually. We're, we're tribal. We're mm -hmm. tribal. And I find our society's gotten way away from that now. Absolutely. And that's, it's sad. And the other thing I find with myself, I was brought up to think you know, made to think, if you ask for help, you're weak. Ah, yes. Or if you show your emotions, you're weak, and it's actually the opposite. Allowing yourself to be vulnerable and honest yes. is much more, it's just, just a stronger, uh, that's great. All those yeah. things that mm -hmm. yeah. you said were great. Yeah, I have about 20 more, but those seemed like the really <laughs> important ones. Well, yeah. No, that's great, because you just really brought us from the beginning hmm. and just kept us going, you know, like from our values mm -hmm. and our willpower and all that mm -hmm. just brought us right through. So Thank how you. about if you just, I have just a little bit more time yes. for just one more wrap up or mm -hmm. one more important thing that you'd like to say to help our audience. Yeah. You know, I think the other thing is we can be driven and sometimes we just need to, to become vulnerable and offer ourselves a word of kindness mm. and self-compassion because goals are not straight lines. It's not A to B. They, you know, have loop-de-loops and whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you know, they <laughs> take, perfect. you know. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to be with ourselves when it's not going on plan or when we feel frustrated? Right. Yeah. Yeah, and we do have to be kind to ourselves and realize we've done stuff. Done and just stuff. Acknowledge it. Absolutely. We've done stuff. We we are courageous. We've been courageous in our lives. We can we can pull ourselves up, but we can also sort of join the tribe in our humanity. Yes. 
And that's a whole nother topic. Is it is. The whole tribe thing. Well, mm -hmm. Julia, this has been great. Thank you, you so I've actually, much, I'm going to bring this home and just really think about this, what you've said. Thank you. So thank, thank you, you for so sharing. Much. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Julia Mines, you can go on to WBOA.org and check her out. Thank you so much.